insert that for you up here uh, some nail grinding ear cleaning and teeth brushing for you and while you're watching that in fa fast motion I'm going to tell you really quick what we're going to do today today's lesson is going to be on stacking your dog we hope you enjoyed that quick review and you see that there's nothing different between a small dog maintenance and a big dog maintenance. The only thing different is on smaller dogs, we do use a softer bristle brush uh, for the tooth head on the toothbrush. Uh, other than that, the same exact Dremel, the same exact Dremel head, the same exact ear cleaner, everything is the same. And uh, hopefully those of you who didn't think my smooth foxes would stay still for tooth brushing, you're impressed that they do. Uh, so let's get into today's uh, topic and that is the hand stack and the five steps to a hand stack. Sometimes six if you're new. Hi everyone, we're back with our demo dog to teach hand stacking. We were going to try to do this outside with a bigger dog, but unfortunately it's really windy out there and I don't want to lose the sound quality. So we're gonna do this with a table dog today. Maybe in the future, if uh, this isn't easy enough to follow, we'll take a dog outside and do a dog outside to learn uh, the stack. And our next video, I promise you, is going to be another homework project, which is winding up your leash. So for now, you're going to take your leash and just put it around your neck if you can, if it's long enough, whether you have a big dog or you have a little dog. The last thing you want to do is have your lead hanging all over the place and it's distracting the judge. So um, a video coming up soon about the different types of leads, what's good for one dog isn't always good for another, and uh, another video coming up is going to be how to wind up your leash in your hand so it's out of the way. Back to today's video, we're going to be doing the, the five count, sometimes six count, for stacking your dog. And it is one, put your front leg underneath the dog, here's the shoulders, the front leg should come straight down from the shoulders. I call it switch hands, because I just switched hands. Two, put your other front leg down, so it's straight here right next to the other foot with minimal space in between it comes straight down you don't want to be going like this too far apart too close together you want it exactly where those front legs should come down and underneath their shoulders so it's one switch hands two switch hands three make sure that hawk is perpendicular to the ground 90 degree angle and then four. The same thing as the spacing in the front. You want to make sure you have proper spacing behind. Um, it should be almost double the space that you have in the front legs. Um, you should be able to see the rear, when looking at your dog from front on, you should be able to see the two rear feet on the outsides of the two front feet and vice versa. From the rear, you should be able to see the two front feet inside the two rear feet. So one, switch hands, two, switch hands, three, four, five is your pose, and six sometimes double check your pose for the beginners. Sometimes six need, uh, beginners need an extra count just to make sure they got it right. And that's it, that's my five counts. So we're gonna relax her for a minute and then I'm going to try it again for you. And notice how if you have the right length of leash and your dog is on the table, or if it's on the ground, that leash is going to be out of the way if you just put the lead around your neck. Here we go again. One, switch hands. Two, switch hands. Three, four, five. 
Here's where that table training video that we did last week is, is going to come in handy. When we taught her the edge of the table and we put her right on that edge and we taught her the pressure points of leaning back, leaning back, and she came forward on her stack. Here's where it's going to come in handy because as I bring her back up to the front and I'm going to do the count again. One, switch hands, two, switch hands, three, four, I can do my pressure point a little bit and she's going to come back up on her stack. So that's combining the last video that we did. If you haven't seen it yet, I'll have it linked for you in the information box below. Um, but that's our normal hand stack, five count, six count for beginners. Give yourself a little more time so you don't panic, you're not in a big rush. Another thing that you might have noticed that I just did was if her foot was in the right place already, I just double checked it. I didn't move it. I just double checked it. And uh, I'm going to release her now so that she's not having to stand on that stack for too long. That stack for too long is definitely what makes the dogs not like stacking. You notice I'm not using cookies when I'm training her on the table nor on the ground. Um, handlers that are taking on dogs for the first time have a disadvantage and I do believe some people follow what we do. Um, we don't have a bond yet with a new dog. We're sent into the ring with them. They're not behaving. So as a last ditch effort, we put the food in their face so we can just get them to hold still. It doesn't make the prettiest picture for the judges. So if you have the time, you need to do your training in advance and have the dog standing in that stack without the cookies. The cookies should always be a reward. But if you're following what you see handlers do, Typically, the reason why we'll use the food is just because they don't know us they, and we, we can't give them a, a training correction in the ring and we want them to just learn to stand still. So that is typically why we will um, put food in their mouth. But the last thing that the judge wants to do is come up to the dog with food in its mouth or in its teeth or it's eating or trying to finish what it, what it ate as they come to see the mouth. So when you do your training for your staff, don't forget to uh, not use the food. It's a reward when they're all done. Or to get their attention. It's absolutely fine to hold it and they're watching it to get their attention, but, but never just in their mouth and you're, 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 not, you're not even holding the top of their head anymore. You're just holding the food in front of their face and moving their legs. Um, it looks sloppy. It looks less professional. Take your time and do your training without using the food as um, your hand. And now you'll also see in the last video when I said use your grooming arm as your third hand. Without that grooming arm holding her head still, I have to use my hand to hold her head in place while I'm stacking her. Um, people dogs have an advantage. I don't have to switch hands as much. I can do all four feet with one hand. When I say switch hands, it's much more for the bigger dog that's on the ground. So your one switch hands, two, switch hands, three, four, and your pose. Or your pose is a dog that has a tail down and you're up in front with food, making it um, alert and aware, but you're not necessarily feeding it. So those are my tips for hand stacking. I hope you enjoyed them and we will um, wrap this video up. One more quick tip on the table tip training video. We had one question that was, what do you do if your dog constantly tries to sit? And I didn't have an example of that, uh, but I do want to show you what I use when dogs that I am training try to sit all the time. And I find a box, Amazon boxes, that fit under the dog in particular. And, and I leave it there so that if they try to sit, this can't hurt them. They sit or they try to step forward and their feet knock it, but nothing is dangerous or harmful to them. Nothing can hurt them. So find a Amazon box or any kind of box that will fit under your dog. Um, and even if they're, they panic over something being there, this can't hurt them and it knocks and it will fall out of the way instead of hurting them. So last little tip of the day, hope you enjoy that too. We only thought we were done. I forgot to mention to you the upcoming Golden Retriever webinar that I'm going to be a part of. 
It's hosted by thegroomingland.com. The information is right here, and I will have more information in the description box below. We hope that you sign up, and we'll see you there. Again, thank you for joining us. We hope these videos are uh, informational for you. Don't forget to like the videos, subscribe to our channel. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, because we're trying to keep these short and, and concise, make sure you leave them in the information box below and we'll respond to you as soon as we can. And we look forward to hearing from you in the future. Thank you and have a great day.